Hey guys, it's Libby, and my husband stole my tripod, so we are down here on the floor. Welcome to this different section of my bookshelves. So this is a video about the books that I read in November and the books that I'm planning to read in December amidst all of the chaos that comes along with December. So first off, I was participating in NaNoWriMo this month, which took up a lot of free time. Um, I did win. That's the thing that happened. Go me. But I knew that if I wanted to stay on track in terms of number of books completed, I was going to have to cheat maybe the tiniest bit to hit my goal of 100 books in 2015. So um, I read some comics. I read four volumes of three different comics to start the month out. Um, I got these on Scribd, which is a nice, it's like Netflix for books. And so I was able to try them out over there. So uh, one of the comics that I read I liked and will continue with, and the other two not so much. So starting with the good news, I read Lumberjanes, which is by Noelle Stevenson and Grace Ellis, and illustrated by Brooke Allen. And this was so much fun. I had heard about Noelle Stevenson. Sorry, there's an insane cat in the background. Um, Noelle Stevenson wrote Nimona, Nimona, which, oh my god, is just precious and quite possibly my favorite book of this year. Still got one month for it to be replaced, but that's not a lot of time. And I was a little bit sad to hear that she didn't do the illustrations, even though she does the cover illustrations, which is a little bit misleading, but Brooke Allen still does a nice job. And this is a comic series about um, some, I think they're like preteen girls, or I don't know. They're like somewhere between nine and 16 and they're at summer camp and they are super cool and kick ass and friendship to the max. The woods around their summer camp is sort of inhabited by monsters and Greek gods uh, who they occasionally have to fight. Um, and much to the distress of their cabin counselor who keeps trying to get the director of the camp to like intervene and get them to stop trying to kill themselves, um, but the head of the camp is like, she is like Lady Ron Swanson, okay? She is my favorite. And there are large segments of this book, I'm thinking particularly of issue two, that are just yelling. Lots of yelling. And I like yelling. People yell in real life. I don't think they yell enough in books. So I read volumes one, which contains uh, issues one to four, and then volume two, which contains issues five to eight. Um, I gave them both uh, four out of five stars because I kind of read them together and it was hard for me to separate them. Actually, I might have given the first volume five stars. But the only thing that I'm kind of eh about is like the Greek gods. There are some actual Greek gods that show up and didn't like, I didn't get enough of a hint that that was a possibility and it seemed kind of random and out there and like a little too fantasy for the context of everything else that was going on. Um, but we kind of just resolved that in at the end of volume two. Um, so I don't know if we're going to just ignore that for the rest of the series and it will get better or if the gods will be better explained. I'm willing, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep reading. And then the other comic series that I started, we'll start with The Woods first. So I read volume one of The Woods. Volume one is called The Arrow and it's written by James Tinian and illustrated by Michael Dialinus. I hope I said that right. This is a science fiction thing where a high school um, gets transported from like America to an alien planet in the far solar system or possibly galaxy or possibly universe. And there's sort of a war between the students and the faculty over who's going to be in charge. And there's monsters that come and eat people. And then there's a small group of folks who have ventured out into the woods, which are right outside where their school now is, in hopes of finding a way back home. And I gave it three out of five stars. Like, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's kind of Lord of the Flies. If you've read Lord of the Flies and you understand that power dynamic, 
Um, you don't really need to read this, and I feel like everything that happens is kind of obvious. And all of the characters are very um, archetypal, so like, you've got the gym teacher who's sort of trying to show his muscle and like take control of the school and then you've got like very stereotypical drama nerds and math nerds and jocks and it's the breakfast club it's the, the breakfast club was lord of the flies is basically what this series is so if that sounds interesting to you go for it i think my main problem was that i'm not used to the timeline and the pacing of a comic because like, I read, let's see, the volume one contained four issues. I read four issues, which was about 100 pages. And I didn't feel like we were getting anywhere. And I know that, like, comic series can go on for, like, thousands of pages. And I am just not patient enough to wait until we get to the, the point. And then the last comic that I read was Lock and Key. It is written by Joe Hill and illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez. And oh my god, it is the most bleak and depressing thing that I have ever read. I have read Charles Dickens, I have read Thomas Hardy, I have read a book where a girl may or may not kill a man, liquefy him, and then drink him, and I could not handle this comic. So, beginning at the beginning, volume one contains, I believe, the first five issues, and in the first issue, I was so confused. I did not know what was going on. There's a lot of flashbacks to people's childhoods, and most of the main characters are all in the same family, so they kind of look like each other, so I was getting really confused about who was the dad, and who was the older brother, and who was the younger brother, and what was even any of this. So this is a story about your sort of typical American family, and in the flashbacks you see that the father is very brutally murdered. And the father had worked as like a high school counselor, and the person who murdered him was a very disturbed young man who he had been trying to help. And the rest of his family are there during the murder. They see his dead body and it's very traumatic for them. So the mom decides to take her three children and go live with either her brother or her brother-in-law um, at the sort of place where the kids grew up to get away from the place of the murder. And then it turns out that this place is haunted by like a demon witch in the well and there's also a door that if you go through it you turn into a ghost, like you die and your soul leaves your body and floats around and then you come back alive when to go back in your body. And it was just so miserable. Like you can see all of these people being manipulated by this like demon witch and there is violence, there's murder, there's attempted murder, there's threatening of people's children, there's definitely statutory rape, and there is implications of, like, violent rape. And I just could not. I mean, I, I finished the first volume, mainly because I was doing it, like, during a reading sprint that um, Paul from Common Touch of Fantasy was hosting, and I was like, well, like, I'm sitting here for the next hour and a half doing this, I might as well finish. Um, maybe it will get better. <laughs> but no, it did not get better. I rated this a 2 out of 5 stars because I don't think it's bad. It, like, it's not... I, I save 1 stars for things that I really think are bad. This was just really not for me. And I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. But if you want horrible, horrible grittiness and demon witches, go for it. Moving on to something lighter, Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Um, I read this for Y'all Fest. I did finish it in time for Y'all Fest. Um, I wasn't even cutting it close. I like finished it several days before. This is a YA fantasy set in not Russia. And by that I mean something that is very similar to Russia, but it's called something else. It's called Ratka and there's magic and stuff. And it is about a woman named Alina, who is a cartographer in the first army, which is the proper army of Ravka. And then it turns out that she has this magical power of being able to summon the sun and drive demons away. And so she uh, gets, gets transferred to the second army, which is the army of Grisha, who are the magic users. Also, there's this guy that she likes and complicated 
I really enjoyed this. I gave it a five out of five stars and I had a, a weird <laughs> situation that I was reading like pretty much the last half of this in. Um, I, I'm a substitute teacher and I get a lot of reading done at school when I'm doing high school classes like because sometimes you have periods off and so that's just like an hour and a half where I can read um, and sometimes all you're doing is like passing out a test and then leaving the students alone. So I honestly get more reading done on days when I go to work than on days when I don't go to work. I have the best job. So I was reading Shadow and Bone like in front of people and things happen at the end and at a certain point like a, uh, a new class comes in and I'm like okay students so today you're going to be finding the maximum height of arrows given various masses and velocity but more importantly he did it you have to know I was not able to deal and also um, one of the classrooms that I was in had like the automatic light turny offy thing technical terminology right there where like if there's a motion sensor and if no one moves in a room for 10 minutes or whatever the light turns off so I'm in a room where like the light is randomly turning on and off and this is about like light invading the world and then darkness invading the world and I'm like oh so appropriate so yeah I um I recommend getting a job as a substitute teacher in order to read Shadow and Bone and then I also read Cinder by Marissa Meyer for Y'all Fest just in time for the last book in the series to come out so I'm trying to not get spoiled now that I like actually know who the characters are. So the premise of this book is Cyborg Cinderella versus the Queen of the Moon. How does it get more awesome than that? So this is about a lady named Cinder who um, has no memories of her childhood but she knows some bad stuff happened to her because she has like a robot leg and then my cat jumped on the chair and uh, moved it because it is a swivel chair. Hello. Hi, Nova. Are you messing up my video? This is why I need a tripod. Anyway, Robot Cinderella. And so the prince uh, needs her to fix his broken android and she thinks there might be some like top secret communique going on. Hello, kitty. And also there is a horrible plague going around and the Queen of the Moon is threatening to invade. There's lots of things to worry about. I'm not going to talk about this book too much because if you have spent any time on booktube you've had your ear talked off about the Lunar Chronicles so I'll just say I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, b b a because as many people have mentioned I have a hard time envisioning the future in which people with prosthetics are considered second class. And also, like, I, I don't know, this is something I had feelings about, but I'm not sure if they're good feelings or bad feelings. Um, this is a Cinderella story, and I forget this all the time, but at some point in a Cinderella story, it's sort of the two-thirds mark, the stepmother and stepsisters are really, really mean to Cinderella. They're just so mean. And I get surprised every time. I'm like, oh my god. How can you say those things? Anyway, Cinder by Marissa Meyer. And then if you will cast your mind back to my TBR for November, I said that I was currently listening to the audiobook of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I am still working on that. But I have not finished it, and I'll tell you why. It's because my life has been taken over by the Oristaya. The Oristaya is one of my favorite books ever, as you will know if you've watched my favorite books ever video. Links in the description. Um, it, it's not actually a book, it's a play. It's actually three plays by Aeschylus. The three plays are Agamemnon, the Libation Bearers, sometimes referred to by the Greek name the Coeferoi, and um, the Eumenides, sometimes referred to by the English translation, the Furies. It's confusing. And it is about the homecoming of Agamemnon, um, who is the leader of the Greek forces at the Trojan War, and the various fallouts from that. Namely, his murder, and then the murder of the person who murdered him, and then the acquittal of the person who murdered her. This family has some problems. And there are many translations of this, public domain and not, although if you want to read it I would recommend getting a not public domain translation because it'll be more modern and that'll help you. But 
My favorite translation is the one by Tony Harrison that he wrote for a 1980s production of the Oresteia at the National Theatre in London. And on YouTube, if you want to watch this, there are videos, um, like the films, of these productions, and they are so good. So like anytime I'm in the car and I'm supposed to be listening to Tenant of Wildfell Hall, instead I'm just like... Crutches of the dead below, look we're the dregs of a royal race, the blood clan of Atreus brought so low! Who's that shouting for help in the palace? The dead! The dead are hacking the living down! Your riddles by no means baffling to me! Justice isn't put out of her stride! Justice can't be turned aside! She child of Leda, my household's best bloodhound, your words, like my absence, lasted too long. It is a bit inaccessible, particularly the first choral ode in Agamemnon. I actually showed Agamemnon to David, that dude that I'm married to, and he watched the first choral ode and he was just like, they're just saying random sentences! What is happening? So I would recommend A, reading a more conventional translation of uh, that choral ode, B, familiarizing yourself with the stories of the Feast of Thyestes and the Sacrifice of Iphigenia. And also, you can ask me, I love this play, I will talk about it all day if you have any questions. Five out of five, it's so good. It's so good. So, looking forward into December, oh my god, the last month of the year. I'm currently reading a The Tenants of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, which hopefully I will finish. Maybe I will just keep binge listening to the Oresteia, though. Oh my god, it's so good. I'm in chapter 43 right now, and there's, what, 55? I'm so close to being done. Um, and then I also have Lords and Ladies by Terry Pratchett. I am reading a Discworld novel. I'm currently on page 132 of this very old and beat-up edition. This is one of the witches' books, so I'm having fun with Granny Weatherwax and Nanny Og, and we're getting introduced to Agnes. I love Agnes. Carpe Jugulum was the first Discworld novel that I ever read, so Agnes is more important to me than to most people, I think. Then I want to finish the Grissa trilogy. My mom has already finished Siege and Storm and Rune and Rising and returned them to me, so even though she did steal them, um, she did read them quickly, so I forgive her. So these books should take me through to um, my birthday, which is December 21st, and then Christmas, when I will get plenty of books, I'm sure, so I'm not trying to create too big of a TBR. Also, um, the Christmas, or, or I think we're now we're calling it the Holiday Book Tubathon, it will be going on in December. And the Cramathon, probably, yes, I would like there to be a Cramathon Woody Novels, please make that happen. Um, so I'll have different TBRs for that to fill out my books in December. Um, you know what we haven't done in like a really long time? We haven't checked in with my reading goals for 2015. I think that's because it was getting kind of repetitive. My first reading goal was to read Tess of the D'Urbervilles, which I did back in like January or something. My second reading goal was to read five classic novels. I've read five novels by Thomas Hardy. Um, not to mention all of the Shakespeare and Bronte and uh, other stuff that I've read. Then I wanted to read the entire Discworld series. Mm. I'm in book number 12 of 41. So gonna continue that one next year. And then finally to read 100 books, um, I have read 90. So I have to read 10 in the month of December. Um, and one of them will be Lords and Ladies, and one of them will be Tenants of Wildfell Hall, so I have to like start and finish eight. Uh, Cramathon. Cramathon will be my friend.